text. Blessed are they who hear the word of God and obey it. Just in time. A few decades back, one of the popular swing songs was titled Just in Time. Covered by some of the great jazz singers such as Frank Sinatra, Nat King Cole and others. A man singing of the gloom he was facing until he found love. In the song he sings, just in time, I found you just in time. Before you came, my time was running low. I was lost, the, the losing dice were tossed. My bridges all were crossed, nowhere to go. But now you're here, I know just where I'm going. No more doubt or fear, I found my way. For love came just in time and turned around my life that lovely day. If a man could sing that about a loved one, can you imagine what you ought to be singing about our God? Humanity was at its worst when Jesus showed up on the scene. Worse yet to date, for many years, humanity grappled with the suffering caused by sin. One that no one was exempt from. Because all have sinned and what? Fall short of the glory of God. We were all awaiting the same reward. For the wages of sin is death. In fact, the whole world should have been dead as a result. Brownstown should be a big cemetery with a grave for you. And a grave for me. But the good thing about God is that whereas he would have been just had he destroyed man for sinning, he decided to pay the price to give us another lease at life. And in Genesis 3 and verse 15, we see what we call as theologians the Proto-Evangelium, the first gospel. And I will put enmity between you, the devil, and the woman. B and between your seed and her seed. He, the seed of the woman, shall bruise your head, serpent. And you shall bruise his heel. For many years, humanity waited for the fulfillment of this prophecy. Had this prophecy not come to pass, then there would be no hope experience. In Deuteronomy 18, 15, before Moses went off the scene, he affirmed the people, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, from thy brethren like unto me, unto him shall he hearken. Psalm 110 verse 1, David speaking, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies my footstool. Century after century, people were looking for the fulfillment, Brother Harrison. In fact, when God gave the affirmation to Eve and Adam that through their seed... The serpent's head would be crushed. When they got the first son, they thought it was the man. For Cain literally meant, means the man. As in the one that God told us would come. For she took it to be that the first seed or offspring she got would get her out of the sin problem. But you can get yourself in nothing for in 10 seconds. That might take you 10 years to, to, to get out of. Hello, somebody? He thought that just one pregnancy couldn't fix the problem. Until Cain killed his brother Abel. Then she recognized that Cain never Abel. And Abel not Abel either. So Adam and Eve thought it was going to be a quick fix. But until now, even though the solution is being applied... It is not yet completely fixed. Sin is dangerous. 
By the time we got to Isaiah, centuries later on, Elder Ranger, the Bible says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us in a saving way. It is not just to come and chill out. It is come and to be mighty in his people's behalf to bring us salvation. Through Emmanuel, God has released us from Satan's spell and saved our souls from hell. And that's the good news I am here to tell. It was the work of Christ to restore the broken relationship between man and God. 2 Corinthians 5.19 says, To wit, that God was in Christ Jesus, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and that committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Somebody say amen. So throughout the centuries, women wanted to have male babies because they were hoping to be the one to bring Jesus into the world, the Messiah. In fact, when Sarah, not Sarah, when Jacob with his wives, Rachel and Leah, were having a little battle, Rachel was struggling to get pregnant. Finally, she got two boys, Joseph and died giving birth to Benjamin. And her sister Leah was just giving birth to boy babies. And when she got a girl baby, finally, Elder Millen, you know what she called the baby? Dinah, which means judgment. Women despised having girl children. In those days, those who were particularly in the lineage of Abraham. Because they knew that the promise was that in Abraham's seed, the Messiah would come. So they were all hoping that their child would be the one. To take it home watch me now when we got to isaiah isaiah prophesied about the coming of this child yet again he told us about the virgin birth now in isaiah 9 verse 6 he says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called what church? Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Does anybody know the name I am talking about? I will have you understand that Isaiah was called the gospel prophet for a reason. Because he presented Jesus the Messiah as God's suffering servant. I might have shared with you before how I once witnessed to a Muslim and he told me that he never wanted to hear anything about the New Testament and anything about this Paul guy because he believed that God, Allah does not need any companion and Jesus was just a good man like Mohammed and others. In fact, they elevate Mohammed above Jesus. He was just a good man but he's not God because Allah is what? One. But as I have explained to us, oneness doesn't always mean singleness of person. But sometimes it means singleness of purpose. Somebody say amen. So when I called Pastor Thompson the other night and I was checking his pockets, I couldn't find his wife. Because he said his wife was outside, but I checked his pockets to see if the wife was in the pocket or so. Because the Bible says that the man and his wife, when they are married, they become what? One flesh. Only to learn that his wife was outside with the baby. No, I was not surprised. Because the oneness of the Godhead is in its purpose. Somebody say amen. And I couldn't quote any text from the New Testament to the man. So I had to preach from Isaiah. And he said he believed Abraham. I said, Genesis 12, verse 1, God said to Abraham, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. He believed in Isaiah. I showed him Isaiah 7, verse 14. And this child, a virgin shall give birth to a child, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. I said, do you know what Emmanuel means? It means God with us. So whomever the child is, that child is God. 
And he was there, you know, beating the bushes like a weed walker. But when I got to Isaiah 9 verse 6, and I said, of this same child, Isaiah says, that his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He said, ah, I got his attention. He said, it's about Jesus. That is why Matthew, when Jesus came on the scene, as I will get to in a moment, he referred back to Isaiah. He said, I, I can't buy that. I can't buy that. So he took up his phone and he called a man. And he said, Elder Mohammed, I have two Christians here. And he's showing me from Isaiah and Genesis that Jesus is, is God. What should I tell him? And when they talked and talked and talked, he came off the phone and he said, the Isaiahs that the Christians have, only 33% of it is correct. But Muslims have the true Isaiah. Mister, when the Bible came under severe criticism, the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in the Qumran Valley. And some books were found in fragments. But one of the books that was found in its entirety was the book of Isaiah. And no pericopy that Muslims possess can outdo that copy that was found at the Dead Sea. And in that version of Isaiah, the text is there. He said, I have to go. It's my prayer time. Gone. Searched all over. In gone. Jesus is God. So when we get to Isaiah, Matthew 1, 18 through 25, the Bible says, Now the birth of Jesus was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, and before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Story come to bump. And many of us today, as much as we accept the story, if we were living in those days, we would not have bought it. If social media was around, what a scandal. YouTube vloggers would have taken it over. All over social media, this one will be. And people say, hey, yeah, I'm going to see if he's one of them foo-foo Jamaican men that were going to steal like a him. Mary was formed with child of the Holy Spirit. So Joseph, her husband, verse 19, being a just man. What kind of man, church? just man and not wanting to make her a public example was minded to put her away how secretly joseph was indeed a just man do not hang your dirty laundry in the public if it were some people it reached by whatsapp status it gone on them facebook page i can't believe say mary give it away but notice what justice requires that you do not make an example of those who treat you badly hello somebody when people do you bad things you are not supposed to broadcast it that is what god requires of christians i say amen for the church amen joseph had every reason to say look at what mary has done to me and i've been a faithful fiance no he was going to do it to everybody secretly but while he thought about these things behold an angel of the lord appeared to him in a dream saying joseph son of david do not be afraid to take to you mary your wife for that which is conceived in her is of the holy spirit thank god joseph also had a relationship with god hello let me tell you something any plans that god has for you that includes somebody else he will not tell the person about the plan and not reveal it to you one man came to church and told the woman that the Lord told him in a vision that she's going to be the wife. The woman said, I'm not hear that yet. Hello, somebody? You may not hear at the same time like in this case, you know. But any plan that God has for your life that has to do with somebody else, he's going to tell you about it. What do you say? And the Bible says, you shall call his name what? Jesus, for he will save his people what? From their sins some people want the salvation but they don't want to give up the sin but charles Spurgeon was spot on when he said you and your sins must separate before you and your god can come together somebody say amen so this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through the prophet saying which prophet isaiah behold the virgin shall be with child and shall what bear a son and you shall call his name emmanuel which is what God with us. And Joseph arose from sleep, did as the angel commanded, and took to him his wife, and did not know her, that's intimately speaking now, sexually speaking, and did not know her, so they never had any honeymoon when they got married. 
till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name what? Jesus. Now, I think there are some important lessons, Elder Bailey, in Joseph and Mary's situation for all of us. Are you ready? When Mary told Joseph that she was pregnant, because Joseph was keeping himself chaste like God expects us all to do, he never had to ask her if she skipped the contraception. He never had to say, how did that happen? Did we mess up? Joseph knew that it could be his. Unless that looks could get Mary pregnant. And Joseph set a standard that we don't find today. Because the world tells men that they must have enough God in a bungle. And they want you to feel, young ladies, that if you are virgins, that you are nerd. Nerd and steer. I heard one man telling the woman that she going she going to seize up and she forgot to use double D forty. Make you seize up, but trust God's timing, and don't you compromise your integrity. So the prophecy came to pass when humanity thought that hey, is this thing we've been reading about really true? Is there really a Messiah coming? People are dying. Leprosy is on the rise. The pandemic of sin is taking a toll. Where is the Messiah of which we have been told? But Romans 5 verse 6 says, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. It was just in time because God always knows the right time. You see, we just see time as now. Give me the thing now. But in the Greek philosophy, time was seen both in Kronos and Kairos. Kronos time is day-to-day -day time, chronology. But Kairos time was known as the appropriate time. No doubt, everything that is done appropriately will take place in the, Ky the Kronos time. But God, who not only sees the past and the present, but also the future, he knew the best time to send the Messiah. So when the time was Kairos, just in time, Jesus came. When Cain and Abel were born, they thought that they must have been the ones to redeem them. But then when Abel, the right one, was dead, they recognized that he couldn't be the, the savior. When Cain was seen as a murderer, he couldn't be the savior. Sarah had Isaac long after menopause. And because of this miracle baby, she thought that this one could save me. But when Abraham was about to offer his son Isaac, God told him to cease because even Isaac needed a redeemer. Rebecca had two. And she said, if it is not one, it must be the other. So she had Jacob and Esau. But when she saw the carelessness of Esau with the birthright and the crookedness of Jacob, she recognized that both her children needed the savior Moses was seen as a type of savior when the people saw that Moses led them under the power of God out of the bondage of Egypt across the Red Sea and towards the promised land they say it must be the man but when God talked to Moses and tell him to speak to the rock and to feed the people with the water out of sinful anger he struck the rock which represented Jesus and told all the rebels uh, to drink the water themselves uh, Moses needed a savior he lost the earthly promised land as a result but thank God he never missed the heavenly Canaan when Samuel came they thought it was just the same but even Samuel needed a savior no one born of strictly human beings was able to bring about the Redeemer that is why Mary could do it with her husband she needed God to intervene and so when the time was right and divinity not sexually but with a word of God's power impregnated Mary the child that could make a difference was conceived so that hope could be received but Bible said when we were still with our strength we can deny our sins in due time Christ died for the ungodly and yet many people are scoffing at him 
Many people are taking him for granted. Many people take this thing for a joke. Many people are failing to make their calling an election sure. Isaiah 53 tells us about the suffering of the child, of the man Christ Jesus. Who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he had no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded, not for his wrongs, for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And with his stripes, we are healed. All of us have benefited from his death. For all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his what? Own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Imagine Jesus Christ suffering on a cross, bearing the pain and the humiliation and the mockery when he could have done otherwise, but he had you in mind. He had you in mind. He had you in mind. He had me in mind, so he kept on pressing. No wonder the Bible asks a question in Hebrews 2 verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape if having learned all about what Jesus has done for us, we fail to accept him? What will you say to God on the judgment day, young man? What will you say to God on the judgment day, old man? Who's holding off like you have time? What will you say to God, young lady, and all those who are rejecting the Savior? The Bible says, but as many as received him, to them gave he the right to become the children of God. Even to those who believe on his name. He came just in time, but his coming means nothing except you take of his gift of grace. For God who made you without you, cannot save you without you can we say that together god who made you without you cannot save you without you people seek after many things but let me tell you without god you will never make it to the kingdom jesus says i am the way not a way it's not one of many ways you want to get to kingston from brownstown you drive through money if you want to save a piece of the toll or you can go run away bay and hit to Marmy Bay and hit the full toll. If you have time to waste, you can go to Mandeville and take it at Melrose and hit it through the, north, the east west toll. And if you're idle like that, you can actually drive through Cave Valley, through James Hill, onto Flankers. Or you can take the left turn at, at Riverside and go up at Roadside, rather, around to Kellitz and hit the road. You have many options. But when it comes on to the kingdom of God, Jesus says, I am the way. Without me, you can't go. Without the, without the way, you cannot get there, somebody. The world has many things offering to us. Many religions, many denominations. But whatever you do, the only way to make it to glory is through God's Son, Jesus Christ. I was shocked to see some of the stats on the different religions and the things that people worship. I looked at the top ten, Sister Shirley. And I discovered one they call Shintoism. And they have over 4 million followers. In other words, Shintoism has more followers than Jamaica. As in the population of Jamaica. They worship a variety of gods that they call Kami. 
And guess who made the gods out of sticks and stones? The same people then. What a foolishness. Anything I make have to worship me. If I were to choose that way of life. Hello somebody. At number nine, we have Jainism with over 4.2 million followers. Sister Cheryl. And they believe in a heroic god that they call Maravira. That originated in India in 600 BC. But when you ask of Maravira, Maravira is dead. A dead god cannot serve the living. Coming up at number seven, eight, is confusion, um, Confucianism. Even the name sounds confusing. With over 6.2 million followers, started by the philosopher Confucius in East India in 600 BC. Coming up at number seven, we have the Baha'i faith. With over 7 million followers, Elder Bailey. Started by the self-claimed deity, Baha'u'llah, in 1900 AD, just 121 years ago. And where's Baha'u'llah? Dead. A dead God cannot serve the living. Coming up at number 6 is Judaism. And whereas we share similarities, they rejected the Messiah and are still looking forward for him to come. Make them go and wait. That can't save you. Then we have the number five. Sikhism. What a name. But it has over 23 million followers. And they believe in a, in a certain deity they call Guru Nanak. And it originated in northwest India around 600 years ago. And Guru Nanak was somebody who died. A dead God cannot serve the living. Coming up at number four, as we continue to explore, is Buddhism. You know about the Buddhists. With over 376 million followers. And they worship Buddha. And when we were boys growing up and watching karate shows, we see them before the statues, Buddha be praised. And guess who made the statues them? The same people that were worshipping the statues them. Concrete cannot save you. Coming up at number three, Hinduism. You know the Hindus. And it started in India. It started um, rather in 1500 BC. And they worship a deity called Brahma. And they believe that if you die for holy purposes, you have enough wife and, wife and cow and land and riches over the next part of it. And they believe in people turning into all horses and glorious creatures on the other hand. Like can save you. Coming up at number two, the Muslims, Islam. We're close to 1.5 billion followers. 1.3. And they worship Allah. And they started with their prophet Muhammad in 610 AD. And they claim that Jesus is just a good man. They believe in the Old Testament prophets. Not recognizing that the seed that Abraham was promised came in the person of Jesus. And the Bible says, nor is salvation found in what? Any other. So if they don't accept the Savior, Islam can't save you. Some of them are so extreme they kill you off and tell you that they're doing it for Allah suicide bombers walk into buildings with innocent women and children and men and blow them up in the name of, G uh, of God what a God that is he what a God but coming up at number one and for no strange reason ladies and gentlemen it gives me pleasure to present to you at this time I've often been introduced, but the profile of this man is so great, it would take the rest of our lives to concoct the perfect way to put it forward. But I present to you, Jesus of Christianity, with over 2.1 billion followers. And he is not only somebody who is followed, he never got his office through political election, for he is the creator. The Bible says all things were made by him. And without him was nothing made that was made. Somebody say amen. I present to Jesus. He never went to the University of the West Indies. But he was a great physician. I present to you Jesus. He never went to Cardiff or College of Hospitality and Tourism Management. But he still was able to prepare food for the multitudes. I'm talking about Jesus. He never studied meteorology. But he walked on the water. Am I talking to somebody? I'm talking about Jesus. Hey! 
he is so great that no one word can describe him Abraham called him the seed Joshua called him the captain of the Lord's army and throughout history we see all sort of names Isaiah referred to him as Emmanuel oh they also call him the captain of the Lord's host he's called Jehovah Jehovah he's the Yahweh he's the king of kings the Lord of Lords I'm talking about Jesus no one word can describe my Lord no wonder even Isaiah 9 verse 6 tells you so many titles uh, because no one one title can show some people they only title that have you have mr and they might put jp and phd and each of the different degree but jesus is so wide you can't out measure him he's so high you can't overly describe him because he's so great that human titles cannot fit him elder million i did uh, i got into my poetic imagination and, and as i thought about what some organized organizations and different professions my choose to call this man who has brought us the hope experience i thought to myself that constructors must call him the chief cornerstone i thought to myself that geologists will call him the rock of ages i thought to myself that bakers call him the bread of life that national water commission calls him the living water that astronomers call him the bright and the morning star botanists call him the lily of the valley oh florist calls him the rose of sharon morticians call him the resurrection and the life psychologists call him wonderful counselor lawyers call him the great advocate with the father am i talking to somebody today doctors call him the great physician anthropologists call him the son of man angels call him the son of God the peace core call him the peace speaker archaeologists call him the ancient of days JPS call him the light of the world shepherds call him the lamb of God oh I continue my quest to hear what they call my Jesus well does call him the gate the man in the jungle calls him the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah royalties call him king of kings and lord of lords timekeepers call him the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end but Mary called him Jesus For he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus can make the difference in your life. Jesus can bring hope to your despair. Joy to your sorrow. Strength for tomorrow. Jesus can bring about transformation for your situation. You can't work around him. Acts 4 verse 12 says, Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is what? No other name on the heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Sister Bartley, it is because of this Jesus when on August 1, 1999, I was transformed and gotten the hope experience. Hello, somebody. It was because of this Jesus where I stand here today as a testimony of the goodness of God. It's because of this Jesus why over 22 people have already received the hope experience since we started this program and it's because of jesus why many others will surrender to him today when the waters are troubled brother harrison nor is salvation found in any other i tell you about my lord books cannot explain him demons cannot detain him the world cannot contain him because he's higher than the highest <laughs> greater than the greatest no other can stand the test of my savior the undefeated undisputed champion of love what is his name church of god jesus shout it for the second time what's the name we are going for seven times they say it for a third time what's the name that gives you glory what's the name that brings you redemption What's the name that gives you hope? Um, what's the name that saves your soul? Jesus. Uh, a father wanted to get his daughter off his back because he was in the study trying to get some work done. And every time he asked her to go and play, 
The daughter came and wanted to play with him. So he gave her a challenge, Sister Sasha. He took a world map off the wall and tore it into pieces and gave the daughter the difficult task of putting the map together perfectly and said to her, as soon as you have completed the task, come back and if you get it right, I will buy your ice cream later. And that's what the girl wanted to hear. She went and she started to work. And within some minutes later on, she ran into the room, the study, and said, Daddy, Daddy, I'm ready. The daddy was a bit upset in his spirit. He said, no, sweetheart. Remember, you have to do it the right way. You have to ensure that it is properly put together and that the different continents are positioned where they should be. Daddy, Daddy, it is ready. So he now turned around to look at it to show her the mistakes that she would have made. But when the father looked at the map, the map was intact. And when he was there puzzled as to how his daughter could have put back the world map so quickly. He said, how did you do it, sweetheart? The daughter said, daddy, look at the back. And when he looked at the back, there was a portrait of Jesus. He said, daddy, I love this portrait. And I recognize that it has always been there. It had always been there. That is why I took time out to study it. And every chance I get, Daddy, I would just admire the portrait of Jesus. So when you gave me the map to put together, I could figure out the maps because I don't know which country should be beside which. But I've gotten so used to this beautiful portrait of Jesus that it's stuck in my head. So I just put Jesus together. <laughs> and as soon as Jesus was put together, then the map was in the right place. Come on, somebody. If your world has been broken by sin, if your life has been torn apart by sin, all you need to do is to find Jesus. And he will bring your broken pieces together. He will bring your life back together. He will give you the hope experience. For the Father wants to put you back together again. But for this to happen, you must surrender all to him. It doesn't matter how many amens you say. If you're not surrendered, your soul is still living in destruction. Mark 16 verse 16 says, Whoever believes in me, and is baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned hello church whoever believes and is baptized will be what church saved but whoever does not believe will be what condemned if you want salvation you must be baptized and so today you are watching the stream or you're right here at church listening to the message and you have not yet decided for Jesus I invite you to give your life to the one who died to save you just in time if you are here today and you want to surrender your life to him I invite you to come to the altar if you are online and you want to follow this man click on the decision calling tech team is it there Click on the decision card link coming in the chats and sign up for the Christian Jubilee. As Sister Sasha sings the song of appeal, leave where you are and come take your stands for Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain Jesus 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 let all heaven and earth Well, 
Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the Just something about the name of Jesus. 
If you love the name of Jesus and if you love the person of Jesus, I invite you to stand where you are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is looking. The Lord is seeing. You are here today and you have decided to surrender your life to Jesus. Please step on up. Somebody say amen. amen. And I want you to know that we also have others joining us. We are just showing you a sample of those being baptized today. And we have another group and another group. And by the time all of them have come together, it's going to be a great rejoicing today. And later on at four, when we come for the closing ceremony, we'll tell you all about it. Somebody say, bless the name of Jesus. You cannot come through the TV. You cannot come through the cell phone or the computer or the tablet to come here and take a stand for Jesus today. But you can sign up the link so that we can connect with you and make it happen. Go ahead and make your decision for the Lord. Go ahead and take your stands for the Lord. It's salvation time. It's time to follow Jesus. He came just in time. And he is coming back just in time. You need to get ready just in time. Bow your heads with me. Everlasting Father, Lord God, thank you for your patience and your everlasting love. Thank you for sending your son to die for our sins. Thank you, O oh Jesus, for willfully, willingly giving up yourself for us. And thank you, Lord, for giving us hope in that we do not have hope in a dead God, but a risen Savior. Thank you for fulfilling your promise after so many centuries to come and die for us as the Messiah and for your promise to return to save eternally those who accept of your sacrifice at Calvary. Today we rejoice with those who are surrendering in the Brownstone district. We rejoice with those who are surrendering in the Alexandria district. We, Lord, rejoice with those who are surrendering in the Bamba district and with those who are surrendering in the St. Deca district and even with those elsewhere who have made the decision now and will be reaching out so we can connect with them for them to surrender to you wherever they are. Thank you for those of us who are already saved. Help us, Lord, to be obedient to your will so that we will stay in the faith. Help us not to take what you have done for us for granted, but to repent of our sins and to serve you with all of our hearts. For these two young men who stand as a sample of today's products, we pray, O oh God, that you may empower them with the Holy Spirit, that through their influence, other young people like themselves will come to Jesus. Through the influence of all the other candidates we have today, may many come to call the Redeemer blessed. Release those, Lord, who are struggling. Release those who are confused. Release those who are shackled in sin. And set them free in the name of the Savior, whose name is Jesus. Amen. The Lord has spoken. Let the church say, Amen.